This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design this logo using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and I'll get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is just make sure that the view is set to custom. And then we'll zoom in at 100%. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with that button up top there. So the first thing I'm going to create here is a polygon so I'll come over here to the stars and polygons tool and up here in this toolbar I'm going to choose polygons and corners I'm going to choose six and then I'll hold just I'll just hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a polygon where the corners are going vertically like that. We don't want it sitting flat. We want the corners going vertically like that. And then we can let go of that. And we'll go back to the select tool. I'm just gonna take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. And whatever the width of this is, I'm gonna come up here to the uh, where it says W, that's the width. I'm just gonna click and drag over that and highlight it and just hit Control and C to copy that. Whatever that width is, go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to turn on this lock icon so that when we change the height or width values up here, the rest of it will scale accordingly in proportion. So once we've done that, I'll put this over here to the left a little bit off to the side. I'll come over to the circles and ellipses tool and I'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a, a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm just going to turn this red and I'll go back to the select tool. And I'm going to take this, whatever the width is here, I'm going to click and drag over that and highlight it, press backspace, and then I'll just press uh, Control and V to uh, paste, the, paste the width of the uh, polygon in there, and then hit enter. And now the width of the circle should match the width of the polygon. And with that circle selected, I'll hold shift and click on the polygon. And in the align panel, I'll center it on the vertical axis and then center it on the horizontal axis and I'll put this back over here towards the center of the page. And then we can click off of this to deselect everything. So what I'll do now is I'll click on this circle and then I'll right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the, um, the black polygon so we have them both selected and go to path, difference, and then path, break apart. And what that and what that did was it. I'll click off of this to deselect. It broke that up into all these different little pieces here. So let me put those back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom piece and delete that by pressing delete on the keyboard. Same thing with this one here to the bottom right. Delete that. And I'll take this one and press delete on the keyboard to delete that as well. And then I'll click and drag over all of that right here. What's left? And I'll unify that together by going to path, union. And there we have the general shape of what the logo is going to be. So I'll go back and I'll show you. We have that general shape here set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little taller. I'm going to make the, the vertical height a little higher. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Edit Pads by Nodes tool and click on that. And I'll click and drag over these top nodes right here. And then I'll just hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this up just a little bit, just to make that a little taller, a little higher. Let me go back to the... Um, you know, before I do that, let me zoom in and show you something. There seems to be like these little nodes here, like these little nodes where they're not supposed to be, where the uh, the circle and the and the pieces of the polygon were once connecting, like these little leftover bits here. I'm going to get rid of those by going back to the Select tool. I'm going to go to Path, Break Apart, and... Actually, no, there aren't any. Okay. All right, so what you do is you go to path, break apart. And when I did this, when I was planning out the tutorial, I broke it apart and there was all these little tiny fragments in here. And it didn't happen this time I created it. So if you do have those little fragments selected there, you could just hold shift and click on that black shape to deselect it. And those tiny little fragments will be what's left selected. And then you just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And it's not necessary that you do that. I just like to do that because it keeps everything clean and simple. So. Um, I mean, other than that, you could disregard it. So, uh, what I'll do next is I'm gonna uh, take this. Gra I'm gonna take this uh, shape here and right-click that and go to duplicate. And I'll turn this uh, red, and I'll lower this beneath the the, uh, the black shape by clicking the button. This says lower selection one step. 
click that a few times or you just click lower to the bottom and then I'm going to give that a red outline by holding shift in the keyboard and clicking on the color red and that should put a red outline going around it and we're going to change the thickness of that red outline by going to the stroke style tab and I have this set to 17 because that's what I previously used let me see how 20 looks all right 20 looks pretty good so that, about that thickness is pretty good and once you've done that, we could change that from, a sh from an outline to an actual path by going to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. And then I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to right click on that red shape and go to duplicate. And I'll turn this one black and I'll lower that to the bottom by clicking this button. This says lower selection to the bottom. And I'll give this a black outline by holding shift and clicking on the color black. And then uh, I'll leave that at the thickness that it is. That's pretty good thickness right there. That's still at 20. And then we'll go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. Okay, so we have the general shape here. So the point of that was to create this little border that's going around the shape right there. So what I'll do next is I'm going to put some wording right here. And just for this tutorial, I'm going to write logo design. So I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm going to click on the canvas so the cursor starts blinking. And I'm just going to use all caps and I'm going to write logo design. You can write whatever you'd like. I'm just writing this for the sake of this tutorial. And then I'll open up the text editor uh, menu with that little T button up there. And the font I'm going to use is called League Gothic. And I'll have a link to that in the description if you'd like to download and install that font. Click apply. There we have that. And I'll go back to the select tool. And I'll put this over the uh, the shape right here. I'm just going to hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to scale this thing up. We want this thing to be about that big relative to the, uh, the shapes there. We want it to be sticking out of the sides a little bit. And once we have that how it is, I'm going to hold shift and click on the shapes, any one of those shapes. And I'm just going to make sure the text is centered on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then click off of it to deselect. So what I'll do now is I'm going to I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click and drag and create a rectangle going over this text right here. Maybe about that size. And there's a you can't really see it but there's a 20 point black outline going around that. And I'm going to get rid of that by holding shift and clicking on the X to get rid of that. And I'm going to turn this green just for now. And I'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to lower this one step so it goes beneath the text. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the wording so we have them both selected and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we could hold shift and click on the wording to deselect that. And then we'll just have this uh, green rectangle selected. And with that selected, I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll turn this red and I'll lower this beneath the text and the green circle. So I'm going to lower this two steps, one, two. And then I'll give this a red outline as well by holding shift and clicking on the color red. And I'll make that one a little thicker. I'm going to make this um, maybe uh, 24. All right, that's pretty good. And then we can convert that outline to an actual path by going to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, and path, union. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over those three, those two rectangles and the, and the wording right there. So I have them all selected and I'm going to hold control and shift and just scale this in so that it's resized to a, a width that I like. We don't want it sticking out too much like that. Or we don't want it inwards like that. We want it sticking out about that much. So just try to eyeball it and get an idea. And I'd say that looks pretty good. And if you want to zoom in and out, like I'm doing, you can just hold control and roll up and down on the mouse wheel. Okay. So I'll leave that how that is. That looks pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'll click and drag over those three items again, the two rectangles and the wording. And I'm going to click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And instead of using the rotation handles, I'm going to use these little side handles. And I'm just going to click and drag this up a little bit just to give this a little bit of a slant. As you can see here in my uh, thumbnail, I gave the wording a bit of a slant. Move that up a little bit. Uh, maybe that's, that's pretty good. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. And then we'll go to the Bezier pen, which is right here. Or you could just press B on the keyboard to grab that. And I'm going to turn on this snap to cusp nodes for now. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto this top left corner of the red 
uh, rectangle and then click and then hold control and bring the line straight up diagonally at a 30 degree angle and it's going to show you what degree the angle is down here at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the page in that menu so uh, as I'm scaling it up it's, it's showing a 30 degree angle that's pretty good I'll click and then I'll let go of control and bring the line through the center of that rectangle and click and then back to the starting point click and I'll turn this red I'll bring the opacity down I'll get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X and we'll go to the select tool and lower this to the bottom with that button up there lower selection to the bottom and we're going to do the same thing down here so we'll go back to the bezier pen uh, I'll just press B on the keyboard to get it I'll snap to this corner and click hold control bring this down at um, for this one it's not going to be a 30 degree angle it's going to be uh, a minus 150 150 degree angle and that's pretty good we'll click let go of control bring this up through the uh, the middle of those rectangles and click and then snap it back to the starting point and click and now we could turn off our snap to cusp nodes we're done with that and we'll turn this red and get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X bring the opacity down in half and then go back to the select tool and send that to the bottom and then we'll click off of it to deselect everything so um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring the uh, the banner with the text down a little bit. There's not enough space up here, so I'm just going to click and drag over those objects. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this down a little bit. Maybe to there. That looks pretty good. And then click off of that to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some wording down here going along the bottom of this circle, this rounded shape. Uh, I'm going to put the wording going uh, in the shape of that circle. So. Uh, to do that, I want to find out what the width of this black shape right here is. So I'll click on that with the select tool, and it's going to show us what the width is. So again, I'm going to highlight all of that and copy it. Control C. You might actually still have it copied to the clipboard, but I'll do it again just to be assured. And we'll come over to the circles and ellipses tool and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle. And I'll make this blue just for now. We'll go back to the select tool. And again, I'm going to highlight all of this and erase it. Control V to paste in that height. There it is. And I'm going to hold shift and click on this black shape here in the middle and center it on the vertical axis and then align the bottom edges. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. So let me show you here. If you notice, I have text going in a circle taking the shape of that right here. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to use this circle as a reference point for the text. So. Uh, let me zoom in and show you a little bit. We don't want the text sitting exactly on the circle. We want to take this circle and hold Control and Shift and just scale it in a little bit so there's a little bit of padding between the text and the edge of the, uh, the graphic. You notice here, if you look where it says with Inkscape, there's a little bit of white space between that and the transparent border there. So that's why I'm scaling that in a little bit. Maybe about that much is pretty good. And then I'll come back to the text tool, click on the canvas, and I'm just going to put the caps lock on and write with Inkscape. You could write uh, whatever you'd like. Turn the caps off and go back to the select tool. And I'm going to put this above here just to, just try to eyeball it a little bit. Let me turn this green so I can see it compared to the, uh, the color of the other shapes. And I'm going to want to make this text a little smaller. So I'm going to hold control and scale this down a little bit so that it fits in there. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, with that text selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on the blue circle and go to text, put on path. And you'll see it put the text on the path, but it's going along the outside of the circle. So let me click on this circle, click off of it to deselect everything, then click on just this circle. And we can click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And you notice we can rotate the circle around and the text will rotate accordingly. So in order to flip this so that the, um, the, 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 the text is going along the inside of the circle, what we could do is just flip the uh, the circle horizontally, flip selected objects horizontally, go ahead and click that, and now it's on the inside of the circle. So the problem we have here now is that these letters are a little too close together. So let me zoom back out. I'm going to click on that green text, and then I'll go to the, uh, the text tool again. And up here where it says uh, spacing between letters, I'm going to click on this up arrow just to space out the uh, the letters there a little bit. That's pretty good. Maybe a little more. All right, that's pretty good. And then we'll go back to the select tool and I'll click on the blue circle 
and then click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'll just rotate this around until the text is sitting evenly like that. The top of the W and the top of the E are somewhat aligned. And if you want to be precise with it, you could even come up here to the uh, this little ruler and click and drag to bring down a guide and put the guide over the uh, top of the text there. And then you can kind of just eyeball it and see. Uh, that's pretty good right there. So let me click off of that to deselect. Press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. And I'll hover the cursor over that blue guide and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. So what we have to do now is we have to change this from text to an actual path. Otherwise, anything we do to this circle will also happen to the text. So if I delete this circle, the text goes back to being flat text like that. And we don't want that. So I'm going to click on the green text and go to Path, Object to Path, and then click on the blue circle and just delete that. And now, that's, uh, now we have our text there like that. So just in order to fill in this little area of space right here, I'm just going to put like a star right there. So I'll come back to the Stars and Polygons tool, and I'll select Stars this time, and I'll change the corners to 5. And for this, uh, the spoke ratio, you're going to want 0 0.375. And then we can hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a star. I'm going to make it about that big for now. And oh, I forgot to mention, up here for rounded and randomized, you want those both set to 0. And we'll come back to the Select tool. Click on this a second time to get the rotation handles and just rotate this around until the star is sitting flat. Then we can take the star and put it over here towards the graphic. Click on it again to get the scaling handles and hold Control and Shift and scale it down about that much. And I'll put this in the center right here. And then I'll hold Shift and click on this black shape and just make sure it's centered on the vertical axis. And then click off of it to deselect everything. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over all of this and bring the opacity all the way up. And then we could start to color it in. So let's click off of that to deselect. And I'm going to click on this red shape. I'm going to make that I'm going to make that black. Then I'll click on this green shape. I'll make that white. I'll take this red shape. I'll make that black. Same with this red shape. Make that black. And then I'll click on this red I'll click on this red shape here, the outline, and I'll make that white. Take the text, make that white, and then take the star and make that white as well. And one final step is we're gonna, I'm going to put some kind of graphic up here. And I, I didn't know what to put in here, so I just went and found some random silhouette of uh, a bull uh, online. And I'm just going to add that into this graph. You could put anything you want in there, obviously. But I'm just going to use this image of a bull, this bull silhouette, for the sake of this tutorial. And I've provided, if you want to use that same graphic, I've provided a link to it in the description. Just, just go ahead and save that image somewhere where you can access it. And once you do, I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to minimize this. And there's the bull image right there. I'm just going to click and drag it into Inkscape. Go ahead and click OK. Let me maximize this window. And there's our bold graphic. And what I'm going to do now is this is not a vector. This is, a, this is just an image. I'm going to make this into a vector by going to Path, Trace Bitmap. And I'm going to choose Color Quantization. And I'm going to bring the color steps down to 2 and click update so we see a preview. And that's pretty good. If you don't see that preview, if it's all white or all black, try doing three or four steps and seeing if that works. But I think two should work. So with that said, that's good. I like that how it is. So I'm going to click OK. And then click out of that uh, the trace bitmap menu. And there we have our vector shape. So let's take the original, the image, and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And here's our bull graphic. We're going to change that to white. And then hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and scale it down. And then just fit it over here into the, uh, the graphic. I'm actually going to flip that horizontally so it looks better, like it's going along the shape of that banner there. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create a very uh, simple style logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.